Hello there, Ray here, and today I'll show you how you can build this extremely simple yet safe obsidian farm. Many people believe that wither-based obsidian farms are dangerous and complex to build. That is simply not the case. Hopefully, after watching this video, you will see that it is possible to build a safe and relatively simple wither-based obsidian farm. So to get started, you want to find world spawn. To find world spawn, you have to get a compass, and the compass will point you towards world spawn. So over here, you can see that world spawn is right over here. And that just tells you where the spawn chunks are, which we are going to use. If your compass is working incorrectly, try relogging and make sure you're not using Optifine. Now that you found the spawn chunks, you will want to find the nearest stronghold. So you can throw up an Eye of Ender and I'll show you where the nearest stronghold is. If you are on a multi-server, you may want to go to a stronghold that is not being occupied. So there's three strongholds, so maybe choose a different one. Once you found the stronghold, you want to locate the entrance end portal and you want to locate the spot which you will put items in. So find one of the portal blocks, and pull up your F3 screen, and then here you want to record down the chunk. This is the chunk in which it is in. If you are multiplayer, you probably don't have to do this next step. You could just avoid it by having a player AFK there at the entrance end portal. But if you're a single player, you're going to have to run chunk letters all the way to your entrance end portal. That way it keeps the entity processing. If you want to, you could use this Tess's chunk loader at the entrance end portal instead of running a chunk loading system all the way there in Tessas you would run it over to zero zero and then you would do the arrow trick at the entrance end portal I'll put a link into the, the description of this video so you pull up your F3 screen and then you can start from the edge of your spawn chunks but if you don't know where your edge of your spawn chunks are you can just start near the world spawn and here then you come along and you look at your F3 screen right where the chunks are and you see that it changed so right here you see there's 11, and I go over the border and now it's a 12, that's a new chunk there. And then this is how we set up our chunk loaders. We have a hopper pointing into the new chunk, so this is chunk number 12, this is chunk 11, and we have it pointing into 12, and it's just sitting in 11. We have one item in it, and then we put a furnace over it just to minimize lag, because there's be quite a few of these. In the chat I wrote the coordinates of the entrance end portal, and these are the coordinates of, that we're at right now. So we want to continue building these chunk loaders until we reach these coordinates. I built my chunk loaders in a diagonal because my entrance end portal is often that distance. It's probably easier in survival to go in a straight line and to do it underground, so that's how I'll show you how to do it. So I'm now underground and I'm at Y12, which is a good level to mine diamonds, and you can also place some of these chunk loaders, so you can do two things at once. So now we're down here, and you want to just move along until you come over to the chunk border. So here's the chunk of 11, you see it here, and I come into chunk 12, and you can see that I am currently going in the X direction, so I want to focus on the X one first. So here we're in 11, and I'm heading in the positive X, trying to reach 48X. So you come along, you find that chunk border, like we just did, yeah, right there. So then you just want to knock out the block here, put your hopper in, and then put the furnace above it, and then make sure you put an item inside of it. So I'm here at the border of chunk 48 and 47, so I want to put my last chunk loader in, going for this direction. Make sure that you do have it facing over there into that chunk, and you want to put that item in. So now... I'm at 48, now I want to go and go into the negative Z direction until I get to negative 19. So now I just have to keep going this way until I get into the next chunk. So here's the next chunk right here. And now we'll start putting chunk loaders in that direction. Do the same thing, hopper with the item. So now you have all the chunk loaders coming in and facing into this chunk, which is the chunk that will have the entrance end portal and where the items will come out of. And the next part will be is to make this chunk entity processing chunk. Like I said at the beginning, you can avoid doing all these chunk loaders if you just have a player set here. You can do that multiplayer or single player. But if you do want to do this with one player in single player, then you will have to do these chunk loaders. So now we will do the entity processing chunk loaders. So this is where the entrance end portal is, and I made a visual of all the chunks that need to be loaded and how they need to be loaded from up here. So you start from your incoming chunk loaders, and chunk loaders will take you all the way to the entrance end portal, which is the white square over there. 
So this chunk loader takes it into this one, then this one takes it to the next one, this one takes us into the white one, and the entrance end portal is underneath here. So the idea is to load a 5x5 five five area of chunk loaders. This will make this center one an entity processing chunk loader. The way I make the center chunk entity processing is that I bring in the incoming chunk loaders and then once they're facing the entity processing ones I like to go out in two directions so I got chunk loaders going that way I got chunk loaders going that way and then for each of these chunk loaders I have them go that way for two chunks and this will make the outside ones uh, lazy chunks and then it'll make this inside one entity processing chunk. You can see that this entrance end portal is actually on a chunk border so it's important to know exactly where you put the items in so that way you can make that chunk entity processing. Once you make this chunk entity processing you want to make sure that this chunk is actually entity processing. You want to check that and the way I check it is just with the command block but the way you would check in survival is that you could just get a whole stack of items and drop it here and then you could go to spawn and then once you're at spawn you just wait there for five minutes and then if you, uh, after five minutes went away, you go back to the uh, spot where you dropped off the items. So you just come and check and if this was entity processing, then after five minutes these items would despawn. So now that you got the chunk loaders all figured out, now you want to make your entrance end portal safe and the silverfish spawner here, that will cause silverfish to spawn and then they can fall into the entrance end portal and mess things up. So you either want to remove the silverfish spawner or else you want to put six silverfish, their name tag, uh, in a hole that's made of blocks that they can't get into near the spawner. And this will just prevent any more silverfish from spawning from the spawner. Now you want to store some items up that you can drop into the entrance end portal and that refresh the obsidian platform. So here we got a dropper that's facing downward into the entrance end portal. And we got a hopper and we just got some more items. You can put as many items as you want or how long as you want the obsidian farm to go. If you're doing this in single player with one player, you will have to set up this contraption here. And this contraption allows you to uh, start this clock but only after you go into the entrance end portal and set it up. The problem is in single player with one player is that as soon as you go into the end you have only one minute before the entire overworld is unloaded. There are a few ways to keep the overworld loaded while you're in the end and one way is to have another portal in spawn chunks and just chuck items through it in a time less than one minute. Another way is, is once you get into the end and you have killed the ender dragon the new exit portal you can drop items into it and they'll end up at spawn chunks and this will refresh the time that takes the overworld to unload. Another way that you can load the overworld from the end is by relogging. When you relog into the world it will reload the overworld for one minute even though you're in the end. But first I'm going to show you that it is possible to operate this obsidian farm without having nether portal chunk loader in spawn or without killing the ender dragon. First you'd have to go into the end and move the ender dragon into unloaded chunks and then you'd have to build the contraption around the obsidian platform there. Once that is done you just have to start this clock by putting an item through this cobwebs and going into the end and then you have to work somewhat quickly but then you remove this obsidian here, place down the soul sand and the two skulls and then you want to put in the block, the dispenser, the water and then you want to put in the slab here and remove that slab and then you have to hurry and start it up by flipping the switch and this will give you enough time so that the wither will be fully formed before the items start getting sent through or else the obsidian platform will push the wither around. The easiest way to do this in single player with one player with the ender dragon killed therefore you have the exit end portal in the end is to use three cobwebs. This allows you to throw the item in and it will give you enough time just over a minute before the item comes out the end. So once you hop into the end, the item will travel through two cobwebs and then after one minute the whole overworld will get unloaded and it will get stuck in the third cobweb. And then all you have to do when you're done building in the end and you're ready to start the farm up is to send an item through the exit end portal and therefore it will reload the overworld and allow this item to drop onto the pressure plate. Once it drops onto the pressure plate, it will just push this piston and it'll send this block over here which will start this clock and then once the items are sent through at a steady pace it will keep the overworld loaded while you're in the end. On a multiplayer server you won't have to use the cobwebs because you'll have a friend standing here and when you're done building in the end and ready for the obsidian farm to be started you just have to have a friend come over here and trigger this pressure plate and then he just has to AFK here until all these items are gone and you're done using the obsidian farm. I've set this clock to 
dispense a item every one second. This is the fastest speed in which a wither can break the platform. And on the end side, there's another clock, and we'll set that one to one second as well. That way, every time he gets hit by a snowball, he will then break the obsidian platform, and then it will refresh within one second. Now that we're in the end, I'll go over how to build this. So it's important to notice that the center of the city and platform is the same for everyone. Everyone will be at 149.0 for the coordinates. And you'll want to build the contraption facing in the south direction or the east direction. This just allows you to keep all the uh, entities that the wither is tracking to be within inside of one chunk. So to start out, you will want to go from the center of the obsidian platform up three meters and then put in a bottom slab. And then you want to surround that by cobble fences. And then you just want to place a boat in there. Next, you will want to build this cobble wall. It has to be made out of something that the black wither skulls would not break through. And then you want to put an ender chest here. This just allows for there to peek between the ender chest and that cobble up there. And then you want to put a dispenser in the bottom down here. Next, you want to put some hoppers facing into that dispenser. So we got one facing in, and we got some more hoppers pointing into that hopper. And above these hoppers, we're going to put chests full of snowballs. So on the overall side, by the entrance end portal, we have a chest full of slabs. And for every one chest full of slabs we have in the overworld, we'll at least want to have four chests of snowballs. Just with that one chest of slabs in the overworld and four chests of snowballs in the end, we're going to get at least nine chests of obsidian out of that. So if you want more, you can add hoppers onto here and more chests. Just remember not to obstruct the view from underneath this cobble and this chest here all the way back to this iron golem. So that way that wither can still see it. Under the dispenser, we have a block. And pointing into the block, we have two repeaters, uh, one redstone tick each. Then we have a torch pointing into them. And we have a block. And then we have a repeater on two redstone ticks facing that block. And then we have redstone going around and connecting this all together. So this is a clock. As soon as this block is unpowered, this torch will turn on. And then it will come on along and power that block and then connect onto that redstone and come back and then depower it and this will continually shoot the snowballs out. Three meters past this redstone here, we will have a bottom slab and then above the bottom slab we'll have an air gap and around it we'll have some cobble walls. Above the air we're going to have the T-shape made out of iron blocks. This is where the iron golem will spawn and then we'll have a dispenser facing it with a pumpkin inside. The wiring going to the dispenser is a repeater on top of a top slab. It must be slab so it doesn't suffocate the iron golem. And then we have some redstone dust on some blocks coming this way. When we come near the obsidian platform, redstone dust will first go up on top of this block. This will power this dispenser, which we have the wither skeleton skulls in. And then it will diverge and go into this repeater on four delay, go into this block, and then onto this redstone dust. And then it'll go into this repeater on four delay, and then we'll add more at the end here. Off of this wiring here, we will have a torch. This torch will go into this repeater on four redstone tick delay, and this will go into the clock. And I'll just lock this torch off so that the clock does not turn on until we need it to. So next we'll have to come to obsidian platform and remove the center out of the obsidian platform. And you can see that there's a hopper in the center just underneath the obsidian. And then we have cobble walls all the way around it with mine carts inside of them. I'll show you how you can get them in there. Underneath the obsidian is the cobble wall. Underneath the cobble wall is a hopper. And this is the hoppers that go into the chest. So first you want to start out by putting these hoppers in. All these hoppers are just facing towards this chest. And then the next row is all facing towards the next chest. And this row is facing towards this chest. Make sure you have some blocks along the side to hold the hopper minecarts within. Now I just want to place that hopper in the center. And then all around it we're going to put the hopper minecarts. The way we get these hopper minecarts in is that we set the hopper minecart up on a track up above it. And then we just drop it down in there. And it's pretty important not to bump into it or else it'll mess it up. And we just continue doing that up around the whole entire thing. Once you got all the hopper minecarts in there, you'll want to put cobble walls around the whole entire thing. And then you just want to push all these cobble walls down into the hopper minecarts. And when you get done, it should look like this. And then you want to replace the blocks on the outside and leave the center one. Underneath the obsidian platform, we'll go underneath of these hoppers here. 
and make a T for the iron golem and we'll summon this iron golem in and you see that he has a block to stand on with some cobble fences around him and this will be the main heads target for the wither over here are the chests that will collect all the obsidian and you also want to remember to put in a chest extra chest just to hold all those slabs that we have so you want to put in quite a few chests you can calculate how much obsidian you'll have and how much chests you'll need you will want to build this contraption which is a normal piston push in redstone block and then there's a wooden pressure plate here and the idea is that once you're ready to get this farm started you will stack up um, out of range of any endermen spawning and then you can just drop a block down on top of this pressure plate here and this will activate the farm without you being within range to spawn any endermen which could mess up the wither spawning we're pretty close to being done all we have to do is finish up the stuff that will be sitting within inside of the obsidian platform but before we do that we have to go over to the overworld side and put a item into the cobwebs so I'm ready to get it started and I'll throw an item against this wall so that way it will not get stuck on this block here and then I'll just go into the end and now I should have one minute where the overworld will be loaded but it will take longer than that for the item to travel through a cobweb so I have uh, as much time as I need to work in the end here. The one thing you gotta remember if you re-log it will reset and reload the overworld when you log back in so you don't want to log out while you're in this process. So now we will want to remove that center block again. That's where a nice pick comes in. And then we can set up the wither and the two skulls here. And then we need a block dispenser and the water bucket goes in the dispenser and then we gotta lower this boat down by half that slab so now everything should be ready now all we have to do is stack up and get out of range of the endermen I'm up at Y200 and this way I'm far enough away from any land mass which endermen can spawn on so it won't uh, affect the wither. So now you will want to drop an item all the way down so that it lands on that pressure plate down there and that will start the wither up and then right after you start the wither up you will want to start uh, you want to load the overworld so you can either drop an item into the exit end portal or you can just re-log like I said before. So I'm ready to start the obsidian farm up and I built a corner here so that when I drop the item I can line it and it won't fall off to the side and then after I hear the wither spawn in then I'm going to re-log and that will reload the overworld that's the sound of the wither spawning in so now I'll just re-log You can set up an indicator light if you want some kind of indicator light showing that you have turned the wither on. Now you just have to AFK here and you can kind of calculate when the farm should be running out of supplies. So about one chest, one double chest of slabs will last about one hour. So if you add you know, more chests then you can just easily calculate because you can take the clock and see how often it's dispensing. Right now the clock's dispensing once per second. You can modify that to make it slower. You just don't want to make it any faster. I'm going to explain the process of the wither spawning in this obsidian farm. So the first thing that's going to happen is that this dispenser is going to dispense the wither skeleton skull onto the wither. And he's going to start sinking down into that hole over there. And next up the iron golem over here is given a pumpkin and he spawns in. And you can see how the wither before he even got to look at that iron golem over there. He was looking straight down at the iron golem down below. And now the water dispensed and the wither is merged in the water and he will try to swim in the water so he's slowly swimming upward and he's still facing downward and he's still not in range to see over top of this ender chest to see this iron golem over here. So he will be continue looking downward at this one while the side heads will be searching for a target so they're going to be moving around looking for a target 
The Wither is invulnerable at this moment, so the snowballs do not do any damage to him. So the Wither rises up and he hits against that slab there. And now he will explode, but since he is in the water, he will not do damage to the nearby blocks. Now the snowball hits him and damages him, and now he will do his block busting ability, which destroys that 3x3 three three area. This will destroy the water, the slab, and the dispenser. Now the boat will slowly fall downwards onto the wither, and since the wither is tracking the angle down below, he is not rising, but he's trying to go lower to get to him. That allows the boat to set on him without the boat going through him. And now the wither is in line with this iron golem, and he's peeking through this hole in the ender chest. So now you'll see the side heads start aligning, trying to aim and shoot at this iron man over here. When it's time to shut the obsidian farm off, or else you ran out of snowballs or you ran out of slabs to refresh the platform. You will want to kill the wither, but first you will want to shut the clock off that is sending uh, snowballs to him. So that's not doing damage while, you'll, while you are doing damage to it. And then you want to hit it about once every second. You don't want to hit it any faster. So I'll just start killing this wither. If you think that you are done using the obsidian farm forever, you can remove the chunk loaders that are within spawn chunks. This will just take away some of the stress on the server. And if you don't want to do that, you could just remove the items within the hoppers. And this will allow the chunk loaders not to work anymore and it will relieve stress to the server. In the description, I'll have a world download. And the way that the world will be set up is that you'll be set in the end and the item will be set just above the cobwebs so that you can come in and you'll get one minute of overworld being loaded and then you have to relog to have the items come down into the cobwebs but I'll have everything set up here so that you can test it out for yourself and then you can build this in your own world I highly recommend that you take advantage of this obsidian farm because if 1.9 they have changed the way that the end platform regenerates and it will only regenerate if a player goes through and not if any other entity goes through. So get a ton of obsidian in 1.8 while you still can. There you have it guys, a super simple obsidian farm that is extremely safe to use for everyone. If you found this intriguing, show me with a like. If you want to see what crazy farms I build next, subscribe to my channel. And if you have any questions, be sure to comment. Bye bye.